Over the course of this project, I've tried to package each of the videos into a specific theme. Motor installation, cooling system design, why this is taking so long. But sometimes you just have a bunch of little things. A lot of builders will throw up videos that are just a series of a bunch of little things. We did this, and then we did this, and then we did this. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I don't like these videos. That said, this is one of them. I've had a few videos recently that didn't have anything to do with the Jaguar project, but that doesn't mean I haven't been working on it. I have, it just feels like I haven't made much progress. I keep doing things that aren't even on the to-do list. I talked about this a bit in a previous video. As your project progresses, you'll notice lots of little things you hadn't thought of before. You'll also notice a lot of things that don't really fit under any system umbrella. And since I'm marching towards my first drive, there are a lot of things that I just can't ignore anymore. So we're just gonna buckle down and get things done. To fit the battery modules, I needed to raise the body up off of the frame by about three quarters of an inch. Some of you remember that I had cut up some wood that I had lying around as temporary spacers. Well, wood probably isn't the best long-term solution, so I made some aluminum spacers. I also had to remake the bolts for these. The bolts are just welded to square plates since it's hard to get a wrench and socket up on the top. I had originally thought about angling the body on the frame a bit to minimize the amount of lifting that would have to be done, but it got a little too close for comfort in the rear and I just went with three quarters of an inch all around. So I had to make some of those bolts. Easy enough, cut and drill some square washers, weld, and paint. Then I lifted the body, removed the old wood spacers, put new ones in with rubber cushions on top, and then dropped the bolt through. I nudged the body around gently until it was centered on the frame, then I torqued all the bolts down. So the body is bolted to the frame along the side, but not in the center. This is a little more involved since I unceremoniously removed the center X-brace that had many of the frame-to-bolt fasteners. The battery has places for five bolts to go all the way through into the body in the center. This will help, but I also wanted to pick up four of the old body mounting points. To do this, I welded up a piece of steel that has four arms coming off. The center part of this will be bolted between the body and the frame, while the arms stick out to be bolted to the body in these four places. The body mount side of these is sandwiched between some rubber bushings to give a little bit of room for play. Soon, I will need to weld up a frame to mount the seat to, and that will probably attach to these bolts going through the battery. The floor of this thing was a huge pain. I had to scrape off all this crap and all this rust, seal up all these holes. I had to get rid of the drive shaft tunnel, add access panels. You know what? Let's just do this later. I had the brake lines all installed and the system filled, but then I decided to add power steering to my firewall. This required me to rerun these brake lines. Not a big deal, but that meant I had to re-bleed the whole system. While I was at it, I rotated the inlet fittings on the front brakes. They were pointing up, which created a high point for air to get trapped in. There's still a high point this way, but it's easier to make sure there isn't any air when bleeding the brakes. I needed to clamp down the brake lines so they wouldn't be flapping around all over the place. To do this, I tapped the frame and bolted in some P-clamps with some thread locker. Hopefully this is adequate. I also had to P-clamp all the coolant lines, which I actually haven't finished yet. <sighs> no, I'm not ready for this yet. The pedals were inconveniently located in the back of the car, mostly because that's where the controller is located. The wires were not long enough to make it to the front, so I had to make an extension. I ran these wires through the opening in the lower frame on the right side. I believe this qualifies as a rocker panel. The plastic tube here is to protect it and make it easier for me to run more wires in the future. This is actually a coolant hose that came with the Tesla battery. I still need to move the control box to the front so that I can switch between park and drive unless anybody just wants to sit in the trunk while I yell commands at them. Park! Okay, all right, we gotta do this. There are four things here, so let's just break it up into smaller bits. First, we have to bond in a panel here to close out this part. Then we need to make removable panels for these two openings. After that, we have to clean off all this crap from the floor, and then we gotta level out the depression so it's flat. We also need to paint it, so that's actually five things. Whew. Okay, first thing, this closeout panel. I didn't want to weld this because it's sitting directly atop a giant high voltage battery, so we're gonna use some 3M panel bond. I painted the bottom of this sheet of steel, except for the outer half inch or so where I put the panel bond. Then I half-ass cleaned up the floor and bonded it in. 
it didn't work. My half-assed cleaning was not assed enough. So I just welded it, carefully and only in a few spots. The car did not catch on fire, so I think we're good. The other giant openings need to have removable panels so that I can get to the electronics and stuff underneath. The front one is especially difficult because it's cut out through the stampings in the panel. I don't really want to make a panel that follows the stamped contour, so I just bonded in some steel strips. This will give me a flat surface around the perimeter and something to bolt the panel to. I was skeptical of this bonding strength, so I also bolted these in. I drilled through and tapped the steel, threaded in a stud, and then added a nut on the bottom side. That's probably good enough. To make the closeout panel for this front area, I just welded some sheet to a piece of aluminum angle. I could have just bent a sheet of aluminum, but I already had the smaller sheet and the angle, so this is what happened. This rear area is kind of a weird shape. I cut out this part, which was for the drive shaft. I was just going to bond in a flat plate, but I kind of want to be able to remove it to get access to the high voltage lines and stuff, so I'm going to make a removable panel. Also, we've seen how good I am at cleaning up these panels before bonding, so let's not bond it again. I tried to get a good broad radius on this bend so the high voltage lines would have room. I hammered the corners of this a little bit sharper so it would get a better seal around the edge. Now I just have one big rectangular opening. I also have an aluminum piece that is just barely too small to cover it, but I also have a strip of aluminum, so I just welded it on as an extension. This is a pretty flimsy panel as is, so I also welded on a piece of aluminum angle to the bottom to give it some stiffness in case a big fat guy sits in my back seat. To make this panel removable, I added rivet nuts to the seat pan, but I didn't bother to look underneath the pan before I started drilling, and I drilled right into a rubber coolant line. Yay! Fortunately, I had the exact bend that I needed in my tub of extra bends. I clamped the rubber line on either side to keep the coolant from leaking out onto my floor, then swapped out the hose, reconnected it all, and filled the coolant system back up. Then I went to the other side and did the exact same thing. Sometimes you just need to call it a night. This time, it didn't go through, but it did gouge the hose, so I ordered a replacement, which I will swap out tomorrow. The floor is pretty gross. There's a lot of surface rust, and most of the floor has this spray-on rubber goo that I'm guessing was supposed to be sound deadening material or something. Scraping up some of it shows rust underneath, which is not great, it means I'll have to scrape it all off, brush off all the rust, and repaint the whole floor. I'll be honest, this took me five days. I kind of hate doing this, so I didn't just sit down and get it all done in one go. That's probably what I should have done. I was just dragging my feet, complaining that I didn't want to, when if I just did it, I'd have been done already. Sometimes, I'm six years old. The car originally had these compressed fiber things that went into the stamped panels so the carpet would be flat. I threw these out with all the carpet, mostly because they were not in great shape, but also because I assumed they were made from pure cancer. But I still need something to fill in these depressions. I considered 3D scanning the floor and having some pieces laser cut out, but I decided to just use some self-leveling sealant. This stuff is typically used on concrete, but there are a couple of really good reasons why it's perfect for this application. First, it's self-leveling, meaning I just kind of pour it in and forget about it. But most of all, it's perfect for me because I had some lying around in my garage, literally within arm's reach of my car. I did a test run with it, letting it dry and then pulling some up to make sure it didn't cause any corrosion. It seemed fine. After that was mostly leveled out, I painted the floor with some epoxy paint. And then Dynamat. But we'll talk about that next time. I needed to shorten and recrimp the HV lines going from the battery to the outhouse. I also needed to clamp down the lines, and by that I mean clamp up the lines. I modified an aluminum project box as an inlet to the battery. This allows me to have a sealed inlet and also be able to ground the shielding on this side. There were some other things that I maybe didn't need to do, but distracted my attention. I keep thinking I'm a couple of weeks away from my first drive, but that couple of weeks keeps moving along with time, always being a couple of weeks. Perhaps it will be a couple of weeks, or perhaps in two weeks it will be one more week, and then after that, it will be three more days, always halfway more to go. Possibly time is an illusion, and the first drive will always be just out of reach. Tune in next week to find out. Like and subscribe!